Okay, chapter 4.4, Irrational Numbers, is kind of a big chapter. There's a lot packed into one section. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work through uh, three examples from each kind of t different types of questions you'll have. The first are expressing each power as, as a radical. <clears throat> so you should notice that 27 to the power of 2 thirds has a fraction exponent. When you're given a fraction exponent, you have to notice that the top number is my exponent, like my exponent, and I'll show you how this works in a second. The bottom number is like the root. So in order to work out 27 to the 2 thirds, I would write the third root. So I'd write a square root sign, then with a 3, because it's the third root of 27. And then the exponent of 2, I'm going to put on the outside. The reason I do this is because when you're dealing with numbers, it's a lot easier when you're actually solving these things to do the root first, then the exponent. So if I was to take the third root of 27, on your calculator, you have 27, the third root is right here, or you might have another button that looks like a square root with a 3 on it. So the cube root of 27 is 3, so I end up getting 3 squared, remember I haven't dealt with the exponent yet, and the answer to that is 9. Notice that it was much easier to take the cube root of 27 first, than having 27 and squaring it. Because sometimes you'll have to do these without a calculator. So you'll have to know that the cube root of 27 is 3. Next, let's deal with an example that has um, variables. If I have a fraction exponent on the outside, what I would probably do is I would multiply the exponent in. So I would take the 1 third, and I would multiply the 1 third by the 2 for the x, and by the 3 for the y. So 2 times a third is x to the 2 thirds, y to the power of 3 times 1 third, 3 times 1 third is 3 thirds, or just 1. Now I'm going to write these as a radical, so x to the 2 thirds. <clears throat> Remember the top is like my power, the bottom is my root, it's actually the same exponent as before. So I'm going to have the cubed root of x squared over and 3 over 3 is just 1, so it's just y on the bottom. So the only root I have is the one on the top. Next I have this exponent here. Uh oh, it's not a fraction. So what I want to do is I want to take, take this and convert it to a, whoops, convert it to a fraction. So 0 0.5 as a fraction is 1 half. So this ends up being 225 to the power of 1 half. All the same rules apply. Exponent is the top, root is the bottom. So this time I would have square root, because it's just a 2, of 225 to the power of 1. So the power of 1 isn't going to change it. So I know that the square root of 225 is 15. 15 to the power of 1 is just 15. All right. Now let's work backwards. Express each radical as a power. So this time I'm going to work backwards. I'm going to look to see, okay, what's my power? Okay, it's a 5. What's my root? Oh, on this one is a 3. So I'm going to have p, and I know that my exponent is going to be a fraction. The number on top of my exponent, or the fraction, is going to be the exponent, which is 5. And the number on bottom, number bottom, root, is 3. Next one I have is x to the 2 thirds, uh oh, square root. Okay, how does this work now? So I have x to the 2 thirds inside, which already has a fraction exponent. And if I was to change this radical sign or the root sign to a fraction exponent, what would I have? Well, you know it's got a root of 2, because every square root is automatically a 2. And what's the exponent? Well, there's none written, so we assume it's a 1. So I have a 1 exponent over a 2, which is my root. What do I do with these two exponents now? I multiply them. So I have this is finally equal to, and when you're multiplying fractions, remember you multiply tops by tops, bottoms by bottoms. So 2 times 1 is 2, 3 times 2 is 6. I can reduce that to x to the 1 third. Last one I have here is 16 squared, and it's the nth root. So I'm not actually given a number here. So this is going to d demonstrate how this actually works. So 16 
my exponent is 2, my root is n, and that's all you can do for that one. Exponent goes on top, root goes on the bottom. <clears throat> all right, now we have evaluate each expression to four decimal places. Whenever you see something like this, you always want to bring up your calculator because you're not going to be ha um, you're not going to have to do these in your head. So let's look at the square root of 0 0.25. So 0 0.25 square root is 0 0.5. Next one, 5 root 7. So I have 5. Now I can't do this on this calculator like it's written. So I'm going to have to actually first of all do the square root of 7 first. And then in between the square root and the number in front is always multiplication. You always multiply the two values. So it's going to be times 5. So I get 13.23. And the last one here, I just have root 2. So I'm going to have to do uh, probably brackets. So square or 2, square root, bracket divided by bracket 5 square root bracket equals 0 0.63 if you happen to have a TI-83 then what you can do is you can type in exactly as it's written so I can type in second function this 2, so square root of 2, divided by the square root of 5, and it brings you the answer right away. So if you have a, if you have a TI-83 or something like this, then you can just type in the answer as it appears. Some calculators work like that as well. All right, second to last one, express each mixed radical as an entire radical. So what we want to do is we want to get everything underneath the square root sign. So I don't want the 4 outside, I want it inside. But I have to do something to get it inside. How do I, how do I get it inside? Well, if I bring it inside a square root sign, I know that I'm going to have to square it. Because if I brought it out, I would take the square root. Opposite is bringing it back in, so I'm going to have to square it. So I have to take 4 squared. Remember that anything outside is multiplied by your square root sign. I just showed you that up above with 5 root 7, right? We took the root 7 times by 5. So here I'm going to square 4, which is 16, and I'm going to multiply it by my 7. So 7 stays the same. 4, to get it underneath the square root sign, I'm going to have to square it, because if I brought it out, I would have to take the square root of it. And then I have 7 times 16, which is 112, and that's it. You get it written as an entire radical, you square it because it's a square root, and you do the opposite, which is squaring it, and then you multiply it by the value inside. Let's do one more here, actually two more. The three, again, I wanna bring it inside, but notice this time, be very careful with this. If it's a cubed root, what do you think I have to do with the 3 when I'm bringing it inside? Over here, I squared it. Over here, I'm going to cube it. So I have 3 cubed. And this is to write it as an entire radical. So under my cubed root sign, I'm going to have 10 times, what's 3 cubed? It's actually 27. 10 times 27 is 270. So my final answer is 270. Notice when I'm multiplying the 10 times the 27, that isn't affected by the 3. The only thing that's affected by the 3, the cubed root, is when I bring the 3 outside inside. Then I cube it. So my multiplication on the inside is exactly the same. Last one here. Here, this time I have a 4th root. So when I bring the 4 in, I'm going to have to put it to the 4th root. Now this one's a bit bigger. You have 4. There is no fourth root button on here, but there is a power of, which is x to the power of y. You might have a button that looks like y to the power of x. So I hit that, 4 is 256. So I have 2 times 256. So I get the fourth root of 512.
All right, last example. Express each entire radical as a mixed radical. Now I want to take a number and bring it out, but not 45. These ones are a bit more difficult, so I kind of left them to the end. You have to think of perfect squares, or in the last case, perfect cubes. But because these two are both square roots, and most of them are square roots, we have to look at perfect squares. And remember that perfect squares are numbers that are squared. So two skew, or one squared is one, two squared is four, three squared is nine, four squared, 16, five squared, 25, and so on. Six squared, 36, oops. Seven squared is 49. And usually they don't go up too, too much higher than that. Um, but let's see here. Which one of these numbers goes into 45? Does four go into 45? I don't know. You can always check by doing 45 divided by four. No, it doesn't go in. What about nine? 45 divided by nine. Nine goes in, and look, five is a small number, and five doesn't happen to break down anymore. Whoops, sorry. Five doesn't break down anymore. So that means that nine is one of the numbers that goes into 45. So I can break this up into the square root of nine times five. Notice how I'm working backwards from what I did above. Now I'm at this step here, like I had seven times 16. And then what would happen? I would take the 16, because that's my perfect square. I would bring it out. Oh, and look, it became a four. Or it was, it started out as a four. So that means my nine right here, I can now bring out, but instead of squaring it, I'm actually taking the square root of it. So I have to take the square root of nine, which is three. So I end up with three root, and I'm left with a five inside. Let's do that one more time. Okay, so here I have 200. Which one of these goes into 200? Well, right now, maybe four does. 200 divided by four, 50. Does 50 break down though? Yeah, 50 breaks down 25 times two and 25 is a perfect square. So I wanna, I wanna eliminate one step. I wanna try to get the biggest number that goes into 200. Well, I have one that's not actually written here yet. If I kept on going, I would have 49 and then that's seven times seven. Eight times eight, 64. Nine times nine is 81. 10 times 10 is 100. Does 100 go into 200? Yeah, it does, two times. Can two break down anymore? No, nope. two is pretty small. So I'm gonna end up having the square root of 100 times two, because 200 breaks into 100 times two. What happens? I wanna take my perfect square, bring it out, and remember I take the square root of it when I'm bringing it out. When I'm putting it in, I square it. Taking it out, I square root it. And I'm left with 10 root two. All right, last one here, I have a cubed, cubed root. So instead of thinking about perfect squares, I actually have to think about perfect cubes. So things like, okay, what's two cubed? Two cubed is eight. What's three cubed? Three cubed is 27. What's four cubed? Four cubed is 64. What's five cubed? Five cubed is 125. You should actually know a lot of the cubes up to at least five or six. Um, six cubed is 216. So you should know, yeah, I would say up to about six um, in your head because you, you will be asked non-calculator questions like this. So I'm, I'm basically looking at which one of these, eight, 27, 64, 100, which one of these numbers goes into 24? Well, I see eight, eight right away goes into 24. So I have the cube root of eight times, you know what eight times equals 24? Three. Which one was the perfect cube? Eight. So what happens when I bring it out? I have to take the cubed root of eight. And the cubed root of eight is two. So I end up getting two, don't forget the cubed root, three. That's my final answer. Two cubed root of three. Notice I had to look at perfect cubes this time, not perfect squares. So understand how to deal with fraction exponents, which you've done before, but changing them into radical form. Also understand how to express radicals as powers, going backwards. Know how to evaluate using your calculator. 
And then finally, know how to express radicals as full radicals and full radicals as mixed radicals.